the active mind of a child. All these things are designed to keep it busy. It's been said that the secret of Einstein's genius was that he never lost his childlike curiosity. Even the great Einstein was never able to unlock the secrets found within the thoughts of children. Tanya Skinner is a young girl, not yet old enough to read, write, or even speak that well. But as we're about to learn, that doesn't mean she can't communicate. I loved my little granddaughter, Tanya. She was the best thing that ever happened to me. I know that everybody thinks their grandchild is special, but mine really was. Oh, I don't believe this. Where did I put her toothbrush? Oh, take it easy, honey. Looks right there on the table. Oh. My daughter Dawn was a single mom. She had a full-time job and was trying to make it on her own. To make things worse, that day she was under the weather. Oh, my head. Everything aches. Oh, Dawn, go back to bed. I can take it from here. Thanks, Mom. I'm sorry to dump Tanya on you like this. Oh, hey. I'm cheaper than daycare and I'm a whole lot more fun than a stranger. And I love to be with my Tanya. And she loves to be with her grandma, don't you, Tanya? Don't you? <laughs> that's, that's not for uh, home decoration, you know? That, you can actually play in that. Oh, Tanya hey, still didn't talk so very much, but I knew she loved garage sales. And as usual, there was one going on in Marcus Tweed's driveway. Marcus Tweed was the kind of man who had a garage sale every weekend. I was never inside his house, but I shudder to think how cluttered it must have been. Amanda! How are you? Oh, is that your little granddaughter? <laughs> That's Tanya. Uh-oh. Oh. <laughs> uh Looks like she found something. Oh, no, sweetheart. No, no, you have to put that back. Oh, you want to keep it? All right, how much do you want for the chalkboard? As I watched Tanya play with that old chalkboard, I couldn't help but think she wasn't acting like her usual self. She seemed removed and distant. It was almost like she was compelled to keep scribbling on that old board. I tried, but I couldn't get her to put it down. Even though Tanya wasn't hungry, I fixed her a sandwich anyway. She was totally wrapped up in her chalkboard, and every time I tried to take it away, she'd have a fit. So I figured I'd just let her play herself out with it. I've made you something to eat. At first, it just looked like the scribbling Tanya had been doing all day long. But then I took a closer look, and I got the shock of my life. Tanya, where did you learn how to write that? You don't even know your alphabet. Inside all those lines and circles were the words, save mommy. I couldn't believe my eyes. Then my mother's instinct took hold. I had to call Dawn and make sure she was all right. Come on, Dawn. Dawn, answer the phone. I left Tanya with the neighbor. I felt like I was acting crazy, but I had to find out if Dawn was okay. I was inside, I smelled the gas. It was so heavy, I could barely breathe. later that the gas main had burst behind the fireplace. If it weren't for Tanya and that 50 cent chalkboard, I, I never would have gotten there and my daughter would have died. To this day, I haven't been able to figure out how Tanya was able to write those words, save mommy. How could a child who doesn't even know the alphabet write a life-saving message? 
Could it be the phenomenon called automatic writing, where a person could actually channel someone else's thoughts? If so, who was Tanya channeling? And why hadn't it happened before? Or did Tanya sense that her mother was in danger and somehow summon skills beyond her years? Does this story bear the imprint of truth? Or have we chalked up another lie? We'll find out if the story is true or false at the end of our show. Next, a TV weatherman's predictions turn deadly on Beyond.